I would now like to call upon Miss Cully Thiara, Executive Director of our new performance venue, Doncaster, to address the congregation. Uh, thanks very much. Hello everyone. Um, I'm delighted to be here to speak at what I know is a, a really special and momentous day for, for all of you. Uh, and I'm delighted to be able to share it with you. Getting my degree was certainly a, a momentous moment for me. Um, going to university gave me opportunities I would never have dreamed of and introduced me to a world of people and experiences that had previously been unavailable to me. Education was my ticket out of my hometown of Smevik and for me was, a, was truly life-changing. Um, some of you might know Smevik. Um, it's a working class town, a short bus ride away from the centre of Birmingham. Little was expected of us as kids. Um, at best, most of us at our, my school were seen as factory fodder. At worst, we were unemployable delinquents. Mostly, we weren't meant to achieve much. I had some inspirational teachers who relished opening up our minds to learning and encouraging us to imagine a different kind of future for ourselves. I also remember teachers, like my maths teacher, who said, after I'd asked him for help with a, a maths question that he'd set us, he said, what do you need to know that for? You only need to know how to count your husband's money. Needless to say, not many of us in his class passed our own levels, or our level maths anyway. I resat the exam at 6 form the following year and found that the right teacher had not only enabled me to, to pass that exam, but had also made me realise that I could actually have, and not only understand it, but also enjoy mathematics. I often think of my maths teacher and wonder what I would say to him now. He was, he was not remotely interested in teaching a bunch of working class kids who for, for him, as far as he was concerned, weren't worth teaching. In retrospect, I, I realised that he, somewhere along the line, had lost his passion for teaching and had forgotten the power and impact he could have on a generation by nurturing their talents and making them curious about the world around them. Regardless, he did have a big impact on me, but perhaps not in the way that he might have imagined. He created a rage in me, a rage that fueled my desire to prove to the adults around me, who like him, thought us incapable, inadequate, undeserving, wanted to prove them wrong. So for each time someone said that you can't do that, my internal dialogue would scream back, yes I can, I know I can, and I'm going to prove you wrong. It made me very determined and stubborn, uh, perhaps not always e easy, making for an easy life. But there were also other adults who entered my life who challenged and pushed me to see beyond what was being offered. Individuals who nurtured my desire to learn and opened doors in new ways of seeing and understanding the world. I remember one summer holiday spending days talking to an electrician who was doing some work on our house when I was about 14 or 15. It was called Lynn. Lynn, the electrician, taught me with talk, used to talk with passion about politics and books, about the joy of learning and living, about capitalism, socialism, the women's movement, and the right of equality and freedom for everyone. He used words I'd never heard and talked about stuff I knew very little about. He encouraged me to think for myself and not just accept what I was told and made me hungry to know more. He also taught me some practical things like how to change a plug and replace a fuse which has always come in useful. He with others offered nourishment for the mind, food for thought and created an appetite in me for new ideas and the possibilities of adventures in a world yet to be discovered. As was not a literary house, there were no books, magazines, newspapers. There was neither the money nor the inclination for such luxuries. In fact, I remember as a small child stealing a book from my primary school and my mother making me take it back when she realised what I'd done. The electrician gave me my first ever book. 
a hardback that I still have. It encouraged in me a love of reading and an understanding of the power of the imagination. Let me read what's written inside for you. I read David Copperfield when I was 14, the first long book I read properly. Books focus your mind beyond the school desk and Chapatipan, even if they're a bit sentimental and ridiculous like David Copperfield. They lead you after ideas, the ideas make you long for experience, and there you are, alive. When a teacher told my father that he should consider letting me continue my education and go to sixth form, and perhaps even university, I couldn't quite believe what I was hearing. Was I capable of such a thing? And more importantly, would my parents even agree to it? Education was not deemed to be important for girls, and thinking of going to university then was like aspiring to go to the moon. It's impossible. But education turned out to be one of the most powerful tools for my own liberation. Language, words, stories, books, politics and people have all been really important in shaping my view of the world. They sparked my curiosity, created a desire in me to seek out that which is unfamiliar and opened up doors that once open can never be shut again, no matter how, anyone, how hard anyone tries. So it, perhaps it's not surprising that I ended up working in the arts. As artists, we're at our best when we act as provocateurs, to shed light in new and different ways, to act as a catalyst for a conversation that might not otherwise take place. When the novelist Charles Dickens was asked, what sort of stories do you write? He said, I write stories with a purpose. Beneath the surface of the story, the adventures of the characters, the turn of events, he was trying to reveal greater things the social injustices that existed in Victorian England, or how individuals could take action against these injustices, or how the power of the state could be challenged by the individual conscience. His stories had greater purposes than merely telling a tale. Theatre has, more than any other medium, the power to show us human behaviour in action. Films, novels, radio drama all have this quality, of course, but to play, a live event taking place in a shared public space does this in a very particular and specific way. Theatre cannot change the world, but it can unsettle us, disturb us, and shake us out of lazy thinking. It must, of course, entertain, but that does not mean that entertainment is simply a distraction from the real world. All the great stories of the world, from the plays of the ancient Greeks, or Shakespeare, or the sagas of Asia, the folk tales and myths of all of the continents. They ask us the great questions of how our actions and behaviour reveal our individual moral natures and, how, and our individual and collective moral responsibilities and the choices we make in the light of all of that. Theatre can make us help, make, help make sense of the world and our place in the world can ask questions we would not otherwise have asked, understand the answers in ways we would not otherwise have understood them, and appreciate things we would otherwise never have experienced. It can help us see that we are not merely victims of some natural disaster, but authors of our own fate. The power of the imagination can never be underestimated. As Carl Jung said, the debt we pay the debt we owe to the play of the imagination is incalculable. So as you celebrate your achievements today and reflect on what you have learned and the choices you have made, what might I say to encourage you to keep your imaginations and curiosity alive? I think the novelist Carlos Castaneda puts it well. It is important to do what you don't know how to do. It is important to see your skills as keeping you from learning what is deepest and most mysterious. If you know how to focus, unfocus. If your tendency is to make sense out of chaos, start chaos. I wish you all well as you embark on your new adventures and make your way in the world and allow your imaginations to remain free. Thank you.